to the Featherweight Shop. Today we are continuing with our Getting to Know Your Featherweight series as we work through the instruction booklet that comes with your featherweight. My last tutorial was on how to properly thread your featherweight. Since then, we have updated and added some products to make your sewing easier. Today we show you how to prepare your featherweight for sewing. Our new thread stand now has a threading hole in the base of the stand, which prevents the thread from slipping out of the hook keeping the thread more secure to the upper thread guide. Also, the thread stand is best for using large bulk spools or thread cones. You can turn the thread stand to the back of the machine with the cone of thread placed in a mug, like this. For smaller crosswound spools, like Orofil, we now recommend and use our new thread post. Thread is easily placed in the proper horizontal position on the machine for the smoothest flow of the thread to the needle. So you put the thread on the post, securing it with the smallest cap. Then commence threading to the first thread guide. On some featherweights, this upper thread guide sticks out a little bit, so if needed, you can put on this little tab to keep the thread from slipping out when sewing fast or winding a bobbin. Continue threading the machine as usual, just like I showed in part 4 of this series. So now with the machine threaded, we're ready to prepare for sewing. With the needle threaded, hold the end of the thread in your left hand, leaving a little bit of slack from the hand to the needle. Turn the handle towards you until the needle moves up and down again to its highest point and catches the bobbin thread. Drop the needle thread by very gently pulling it with your hand and the bobbin thread comes up with it through the hole in the throat plate. Lay both threads back under the presser foot diagonally across the feed dogs. Place the needle thread between the two toes of the presser foot or if you have a quarter inch foot through the slot and under the foot. To begin your first stitch, or to practice a few stitches before you begin your sewing project, place two pieces of fabric together, aligning the seam edges, and then place them under the presser foot. Now the instruction manual tells you to lower your presser foot first, but I'm going to pass on a little tip. Lower your needle first, so you can know where you are going to begin sewing, and then lower your presser foot. Doing it in this order helps lock the thread tails in position, but also keeps the thread from slipping out of the needle when you begin to sew. To start sewing, hold your thread tails and enjoy practicing some first stitches on your featherweight. Whenever you're finished sewing and it's time to remove the fabric from under the presser foot and needle, you always want to stop your machine with the take-up lever at its highest position. Raise the presser foot and draw the fabric back into the left. Snip the thread tails either with scissors or pass the thread over the thread cutter and pull down lightly to sever them. Leave the ends of the thread under the presser foot so you are all ready for your next seam. That's it! Your featherweight is now ready to commence sewing. With just a couple more tutorials, we'll have covered all the basic information for you to get to know your featherweight. If you have any questions on this tutorial, or any of the products that we have covered, give us a call at the Featherweight Shop. We're always happy to help.